Rome is celebrating the Passover Seder. Maybe next year in Jerusalem. I'd like to introduce um, the gentlemen that are helping me officiate. Uh, to my far on left is Pastor Amy Bartis from Peace Lutheran Church, Pastor Sam Conley from the Sanctuary of Hope, and my longtime close friend from Branson, Missouri, Mr. Peter Hershey. But I'm sure that these men and everyone in this room will agree that there is only one who is worthy to be praised tonight. And I believe that. stand for the lasting of the chauffeur road. Remember, we are here to praise the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all of our strength. Amen.
who has made us holy by your commandments and has commanded us to kindle the festival lights. Amen. Amen. And during the course of the evening, we are going to be partaking of four cups uh, that have a uh, great symbolic meaning. And by the way, uh, designated leaders, when you pour out the cups of the grape juice, uh, just pour it a little bit less than half full for each cup. The first cup is called the cup of sanctification and represents uh, how God sanctified or set apart the people of Israel unto himself when he brought them forth out of Egypt. That second cup is the cup of judgment, which represents the ten plagues which Hashem, the Lord, afflicted the Egyptians with. Third cup is most important. It is the cup of redemption, and it represents the cup that Yeshua took at the last Seder with his disciples when he instituted the Brit Hadashah, which is the new covenant in his own blood. And then the fourth cup is called the cup of praise, or sometimes the cup of the kingdom, and it represents the cup which Yeshua said he would drink with us anew in his Father's kingdom. It represents the cup of the wedding supper of the Lamb. Who's looking forward to being at the wedding supper of the Lamb? And by the way, this Passover Seder tonight is what we call in Hebrew a mikra, it's a rehearsal itself for the wedding supper of the Lamb. So we're at the top of page three, where it says the Kiddush, and there's going to be a lot of uh, responsive reading and us reading together, and I'll lead you along with that. The first cup, Kiddush, means sanctification, because God said, I will bring you out from under the bondage of the Egyptians, and so designated leaders, would you please pour the first cup?
The first washing of hands is pronounced in Hebrew or chatz. And this actually uh, is a ceremonial uh, hand washing representing the, uh, the priesthood in the tabernacle of Moses and the priesthood in the temple who went into the labor who washed their bodies before ministering to the Lord. And I will elaborate a little bit more on that later on in the evening. Now on your Seder plate, designated leaders, you will find some parsley. In the Hebrew it's pronounced karpas. And there also will be on your Seder plate a glass of salt water. So distribute a sprig of parsley to each person at the table and also let each person dip the parsley into the salt water. the hyssop used to put the blood of the lamb upon the tops and sides of the door frame. The salt water represents the Red Sea, as well as the tears shed in Egypt. Next page, page five. It says Yachatz, the word Yachatz means divided. Now designated leaders, you will find on your table what's called a matzatash. It's a matzah holder. And I'd like for you to carefully take the middle piece of matzah out of the sleeve. And once you have done that, then you break it in half. Underneath that Masatash, the, the holder itself, you should have a white napkin. Wrap one half of the middle piece of matzah in the white napkin. Completely cover. And then after you have done that, take the other half of the middle piece of matzah and put it back into the middle compartment of the matzatash. phrase for the middle piece of matzah that he wrapped in the napkin is pronounced afikomen and it actually it's a Greek word that means I have come more specifically that which is hidden to be brought out later it has great messianic significance as we'll find out and also year after year 
we want to include the children in our Passover Seder celebration. Hashem, the Lord has told us to teach the children what the Lord our God did for us when He brought us forth out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. And so at this time, I'm going to have all the children close their eyes and designate the leaders. You're going to hide that half a piece of matzah that you put in the napkin somewhere in the room, not too difficult for them to find later. And keep an eye on where you hit it. All right, I want to make sure, children, are your eyes closed? All children, eyes closed, squeeze them tight. Put your hands over your eyes. Okay, designated leaders, go ahead and hide the Alfie Cone. totally clear in Jewish tradition. Some of the rabbis claim that the three pieces of matzah stand for the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Some say it stands for uh, the priests, Kohanim in Hebrew, the Levites, and the people. But as believers, we understand that the three pieces of matzah represent the triune nature of one God, Avinu, our Father, Yeshua the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Now, we're in the middle of page 5, where it says Magid, which means the story or the telling of the story, and Pastor Sam is going to lead us in that. The Magid. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be the first for you, is to you is to be for you the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel that the tenth day, that on the tenth day of the month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. The animal you choose must be your old males without defect. You may take them from the sheep or from the goats. Take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel is Slaughter them at twilight. They are, to be, <clears throat> they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and top of the doors, uh, frames of the house where they eat the lambs. The same night they are to eat the, roast, the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the raw meat, the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire. Do not leave any of it until morning. If sun is left until morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals. And I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. As God saw the blood and passed over the houses of the Israelites, so does he pass over when he sees Yeshua's blood shed on our behalf. We keep Passover to remember the physical deliverance God gave us in Egypt, and we keep Messiah's Passover to remind us of the spiritual deliverance. Praise God. Amen. He brings to each of us. Hallelujah. 
Okay, designated leaders, if you pour the second cup, remember a little less than half of the glass. <laughs> Therefore, tell him plainly, 
I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came forth from Egypt. It is necessary for each person to look upon himself as if he personally came forth from Egypt. Likewise, it is necessary for each person to have his own relationship with God. It is not enough to have a relative or friend who believes in Yeshua, but each person must receive him as his Messiah and Atonement. As Yochanan ben Zechariah said, do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Produce fruits in keeping with repentance. The simple son asks, what is this? To him you shall say, with a strong hand that the Lord brought us out of Egypt. As for the son who does not even know how to ask a question, you must begin for him, as it is written in the scriptures. You shall tell your children on that day, this is done because of that which the Lord did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. Now the second cup has already been poured. It is the cup of judgment. And as we reach read each of these ten plagues, I'm going to ask everyone to take your pinky finger, you're going to dip it into the second cup, and then you're going to splash it onto the plate. If you miss the plate, don't worry. It's okay to get a little messy. And as a world priesthood, uh, we need to do this with authority, with the authority of God, who brought judgment upon the Egyptians. So, after I say each plague in English, then you say that same plague and splash it, the drop onto the plate. Are we ready? Everyone dip in your pinky. Blood. Blood. Frogs. Frogs. Gnats. Gnats. Flies. Flies. Cattle disease. Cattle disease. Boils. Boils. Hail. Hail. Locusts. Locusts. Darkness. Darkness. Slaying of the firstborn. Now there is a song that we're going to sing, it's called Diana. And then after that we're going to do this responsive reading, beginning on page 10. Most of you should know the simple chorus to Diana, but I'll teach it to you. It goes like this. Die, die, amen. Die, die, amen. Die, die, amen. Die, 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 die. Do it again, everyone.
and not judge them. Had he judged them and not judged their idols. Had he judged their idols and not slain their firstborn. Had he slain their firstborn and not given us their property. Had he given us their property and not divided the sea for us. Had he divided the sea for us and not brought us through on dry ground. Had he brought us through on dry ground and not drowned our oppressors. Had he drowned our oppressors and not helped us 40 years in the desert. Had he helped us 40 years in the desert and not fed us manna. Had he fed us manna and not given us the Sabbath. Had he given us the Sabbath and not brought us to Mount Sinai. Had he brought us to Mount Sinai and not given us the Torah? Had he given us the Torah and not brought us into the land of Israel? Had he brought us into the land of Israel and not built us the holy temple? And praise the Lord as followers of the Messiah. How many believers do we have in the Messiah Yeshua here this evening? We can still add a further diameter. Knowing that if God only provided atonement for us through the death of the Messiah, it would have been enough for us. But he did much more because the Holy One, blessed be he, did not abandon Yeshua to the grave. But he raised him from the dead as King of kings and Lord of lords. And blessed are those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. You see, God exalted Yeshua to the highest place that the name of Yeshua, every knee in heaven, every knee in the earth, every knee below the earth is going to bow down, and every tongue in heaven, every tongue in the earth, every tongue below the earth, whether they want to or not, is going to confess that Yeshua is Lord of all, to the glory of God the Father, hallelujah. We Tell them 
It is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. As it is written, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was, like, he was led like a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before his shears, he did not open his mouth. Also, John saw Yeshua coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. <laughs> the matzo which we eat, what is the reason for it? It is because there was not enough time for our father's dough to rise when the Holy One, blessed be he, redeemed them, as scriptures say, they baked cakes of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they did not have time to prepare food because they had been driven out of Egypt. The matzah is unleavened. In its baking, it is pierced and striped. It is unleavened because it is without contamination, a symbol of sin. Pierced and striped. It illustrates the Messiah who, being without sin, was pierced for our inequity and by his grace we are bitter herbs. Bitter herb, our Lord, which we need. What is the reason for it? It is because the Egyptians embittered the lives our ancestors in Egypt, as it is written. So they put slave drivers over them to oppress them with forced labor. But the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor in brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. In all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. The bitter herb reminds us of the sorrow, persecution, and suffering of our people. But praise be to the mighty one of Israel who delivered his people from the house of bondage in Egypt. Now let's lift up the second cup and don't drink it yet. We're in the middle of page 13 and let's all read together. Therefore we are bound to thank, praise, laud, glorify, extol, honor, bless, exalt, and reverence him who performed for our fathers and for us all these miracles. He brought us from slavery into freedom, from sorrow into joy, from mourning into festivity, and from servitude into redemption. We praise God for the redemption that he has brought us. Redemption from slavery through the death of Egypt's firstborn. Redemption from sin through the death of God's Son. It is written, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's chant the blessing over the second cup. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, Borei b'ri ha'davrem, Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Let's all drink the second cup. The second washing of hands in Hebrew is pronounced Rachatz. And uh, let me say the blessing Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotah V'Tzivanu Al Atilat Yadayim Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who made us holy with his commandments and commands us concerning the washing of hands. 
And again, the washing of the hands is a ceremonial um, or ritual, hand washing, pointing toward uh, the Levitical priesthood that washed in the labor in the tabernacle and in the temple. But we also know, according to Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6, that God said, although the whole earth is mine, you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And that was not just alone to the Israelites who were there at Mount Sinai. Because the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 38 tells us that the mixed multitude from the nations, many of them also came up out of Egypt with Moses and the Israelites. And they too arrived at Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. And this also prophetically points toward what it says in the Brit Hadashah, the New Covenant, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, where it says that we are all a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation, called out of darkness into God's, God's marvelous light. How many of you are glad you've been called out of darkness, out of Egypt, into God's marvelous light? Hallelujah. It's all because of Yeshua. Now concerning the washing, remember that Yeshua took this even a step further according to the Gospel of John, chapter 13, when he celebrated the last Seder with his disciples. He set an example when he washed their hands and their feet. He set an example of servitude and humility uh, for all of us, that we too, like him, should have a servant's heart. It was a teaching that he gave to them and to us. And as believers, we remember the words of the Messiah in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, that a disciple is not above his teacher, but when fully trained, will be like his teacher. How many of you want to be like the rabbi? Yeshua, hallelujah. Amen. We are now at the top of page 15. Designated leaders, if you would take the remaining half piece of matzah that's in the matzah tash, in the holder, the middle piece, and if you need to, you can take from the other two pieces as well, and break three small pieces of matzah for each person at the table. Three pieces for each person at the table. itself, just by itself, and we're going to partake of it after we say the blessing here at the top of page 15. Baruch atah Eloheinu melech haolam, ha-motzi lechem min ha-aretz, amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, brings forth bread from the earth. And the next for blessing is Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu Al Achilat Matzah Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who made us holy in his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of matzah. Let's all eat the matzah. where we come to one of the highlights of the Passover Seder. As a David leaders, you'll see a cup of horseradish that's on the Seder plate. 
Everyone take one other piece of matzah, the second other piece of matzah, and before you dip it into the maror, the horseradish, let me give you some wise counsel. <laughs> normal amount would be about the size of a penny, a little more. If you would like to clear up any sinus problems for the rest of your life, the size of a nickel or a little more. And hallelujah, if you want to be resurrected right now, <laughs> at least the size of a quarter. <laughs> Don't partake of it yet. Say the blessing. Are we ready? And then we all partake together. Top of page 16. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshana B'mitzvatah Vitzivanu Al Achilat Maror Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who makes us holy with his commandments and commanded us concerning the eating of bitter herbs, and everyone eat the bitter herbs. Take up the matzo with the bitter herbs ten more times. <laughs> where it says Marosa and uh, designated readers you'll see on your Seder plates. This mixture here, it's honey mixed in with a bunch of fruits and nuts. Sounds like some of us. <laughs> Dip the third piece of, piece of matzah into the Marosa and then we'll all partake together. Partake of the roast and the pizza box. Can eat it now.
the middle of page 16, as we eat the sweet after the bitter, so does our God bring sweetness in place of the bitterness of life, as he did for our forefathers before us. How many of you have discovered that life is sweet in the Messiah, in Yeshua? Yeah. And he said, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come to give you the abundant life. As the bitter herb is a symbol of suffering, the salt water is a symbol of tears, the parsley is a symbol of hyssop, and the wine is a symbol of blood, the horoseth is a symbol of the bricks which were made by our people in Egypt. On your table is an egg and a shank bone. Let's read the Betzah. The egg symbolizes new life for the Israelites as they came forth out of Egypt. The egg also symbolizes new life for believers in Yeshua. If anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. If that's you, say amen. amen. The shank bone. The shank bone is a reminder of the Passover lamb. Lambs that were slaughtered. For us as believers, it is a reminder of Yeshua, our Passover lamb. Praise the Lord. That we all have one thing in common we can all share in Yeshua, the Passover Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Somebody say it's all about Yeshua. All about Yeshua. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to actually uh, break for the physical meal, and then a little bit later on, we'll resume uh, with the Haggadah, Passover booklet. And then we'll resume a little bit later. And while you're getting your food, we have some praise and worship music for you. So those of you who are still sitting, you can enter into some praise and worship.